Hello, everybody. Um, how are you doing? Hope you're doing well. Um, happy Earth Day to those of you who are celebrating indoors, most likely. Uh, and for Earth Day, I will tell you a joke uh, because I, why not um, in this case? So uh, where did the killer whale go to get braces? The orchidontist. Not even a laugh? No? But I can do this. They love me. I got my own laugh track in here. Okay, back to math. Let's talk about this. So in this section, what we're going to talk about is our cylindrical coordinates. So we want to now think about how we're going to compute triple integrals, possibly with a different way. Um, and let's see maybe, you know, um, why we would want this in the first place, right? Because it seems like an interesting way because, you know, we last time we were trying to compute, you know, something like this, f of x, y, z, dv here, something like that. And we were trying to come up with the integration bounds for e. That was the big goal, right, to come up with the integration bounds. Now, we saw in the past that it was pretty easy to think about sometimes for some, some you know, some, types of regions E. It was pretty nice to think about this in terms of X, Y, and Z in, in, in that. But, you know, one thing we did see occasionally was something like this, where I would have a surface, maybe even a cylinder, something like this here. And let's say this was my actual object here. Right, this is my actual object I'm trying to worry about. And I wanted to come up with the limits of integration for this. Now, what was the technique for doing such a thing? Right. Well, what I would do, the first thing I would think about, what would be my height here? What's the easiest thing to think about my height? Right. In this case, it's actually pretty nice to think about this maybe in terms of Z, right? If I draw arrows going through the region, kind of like this, if I draw arrows going through the region, we said that I'm always entering from the bottom part, which in this case would be the X, Y plane. And then I was always exiting from this top part here. Um, and then what we would do after I get my z coordinates here, right, in this case, I would get z maybe from zero, maybe it's equal to five, maybe it's the plane equal to five, something like that. Um, and then what would happen, right, is once I've integrated out one thing, I project it onto, the, onto my other variable planes, right? In this case, it would be the x, y plane. And here, you know, we would have this almost quarter region, the circular region here. And many times, right, we see this and we go, okay, well, I can write this really, really easy in polar coordinates. And this is going to start to maybe think about, you know, can I just integrate this all out in some other coordinate system that allows me to have polar coordinates inside of it instead of making me integrate out once and then going from there? And there actually is. And that's the idea of cylindrical coordinates. So let me kind of remind ourselves what the idea of cylindrical coordinates is as we go through this. So kind of coming forward, if I have a point x, y, z, right? One way to describe this point x, y, z is, I mean, it is just, you know, in that same exact way, right? I have x, I kind of go in a taxi cab way, and then this is x, this is y, and this is z, right? That's kind of my goal. Now, the other way I can do it is kind of as follows. I can stick with the z, right? Height is a nice thing, but sometimes maybe it's maybe easier to describe the point projected onto the x, y plane with polar coordinates, right? And so what I could do instead is I could tell you, okay, maybe what I'll do is I'll give you how far away I am from the x, y, from, from, from the origin in terms of the x, y plane, in terms of r, right, in our polar angle, and our, and our polar angle here, which we'll call theta. Now, what this tells me here is this is actually another way. I could tell you r, theta, and z, this case, right? Why does this make sense? Because I could tell you, thinking about this as a cylinder, even just, even just I have a Lysol can. Why don't I use a Lysol can? Got to think about this. What am I telling you? I am saying that every single point can lie somewhere on a cylinder, no matter how big the cylinder is, right? And why is that? Well, if I want to maybe consider this point up here, what I could tell you is, okay, first off, go to the outer edge of a cylinder, go to the outer edge of a circle. Basically, tell me where I am polar angle-wise. And then what I do is I go up on this axis, right? I tell you where I am out, out far enough, I give you the angle that I'm at, and I tell you going up. And that's what, it's, that's what it is. So we can kind of imagine that every single point can be written on some cylinder of some sort. Um, in this case, R, theta, and Z.
And what's nice here is we already know the coordinate shifts, right? Z doesn't change. That's all nice, right? If I have X, Y, and Z, X, Y, and Z, excuse me, and I want to try to figure out how to change this, right? How do I change these now? Well, X here, I mean, it is just the polar things that I'm using, right? It's just R and theta. So again, what do I use for X? I usually use R cosine theta. And similarly for Y, I use R sine of theta. And then Z here is equal to Z. Kind of go from that. And so this kind of coordinate shift allows you to go into cylindrical coordinates. So if I have X, Y, and Z, I now transfer that to R cosine theta, R sine of theta, and Z is equal to Z. This is probably the best equa equation you're ever gonna write. Like one is equal to one. But so there's no, there's no shift there. Height is still height. And we only consider this, and this is really important here. You can't do this, this coordinate shift when I have a cylinder, let's say, in the positive x direction. Cylindrical coordinates are really only defined when I have um, z being my height. If we have x being our height, we actually have to go through the process that we did back in 15.6 and 15.6, where what I do is I think about my height, I project, and then I can maybe move to polar coordinates from there. So in this case, how do I think about integrals now? Right? What, 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 how can I shift this? Well, if I now come to my integral here, I'm gonna use, uh, I'm gonna use black here. If I now have this region E, which might be able to be described pretty well in terms of um, your cylindrical coordinates, what I could do is I could exchange this again for my region E. And what I do now is I replace every X instance with R cosine of theta. I replace all instances of Y with R sine of theta and then Z. And now what happens is I have this DZ, DR, D theta. This is usually the order we will go in. Usually DZ will be first because we're integrating out Z, we're integrating the height out first in some way, right? That kind of makes more sense. The DR, D theta. Now, do I need to include anything, right? Because in polar coordinates, what did I have to include, right? In this case, if I was to switch, if I had DR, D theta, I needed to add this R. And why was that, right? Because I had an area differential. This was an area. So to make the dimensions make sense, right, I needed another R, right? I had a length scale here. I didn't have a length scale here. And so I needed a length scale to add there for an R. The DR was a length scale. And now the R is a length scale, so that's L, L, R squared. In cylindrical coordinates here, we do have a length scale for Z. We do have a length scale for R. But we don't have one for theta. And so that's kind of the issue. We need another thing here. And in this case, it's going to be that R again. And the main reason why is we're not shifting Z at all. So it makes no sense to add a Z there. I want it to kind of shift, we're keeping Z the same. So what we do is we add this R. It's the same thing with the polar angle. And so this is how we transform our integrals into cylindrical coordinates. Wherever I see X, I place R cosine theta and R sine theta for Y, leave Z as is, and then we go from there. Now, why would we ever want to use cylindrical coordinates? Sometimes in the integrand, it might be very helpful, right? If I have something like X squared plus Y squared in the integrand because I can replace that with R squared. This still works. Maybe I see that I'm on a cylinder. If I'm on a cylinder, I might want to use cylindrical coordinates or something like that. So let's do some problems. Well, at least let's think about at least what do these things look like in cylindrical coordinates. Just as an example, to kind of come forward here a little bit, um, let's take an example here. I have one. What does um, R squared plus Z squared is equal to four what does this actually represent in cylindrical coordinates? Now, what does r squared plus z squared equal to four represent? It's kind of tough for me to say, right? We think about things in Cartesian, so let's kind of think. Let's kind of go back, right? How does how do I make make sense of this? Well, if I replace this x squared plus y squared with r squared, what I could then do is I could replace this, and I would get x squared plus y squared plus z squared is equal to four. And what's that? This is just a sphere of radius two. Origin at zero, zero, zero. Sorry, center at zero, zero, zero. And so R squared plus Z squared in cylindrical coordinates really is just a sphere, okay? What if I told you this R is equal to two? What's this thing? What is this thing? 
Um, well, you might think to yourself, um, what is this saying, right? Physically, what is this saying? Think about the geometry of this. This would tell me that I have all points with a polar radius of two. Kind of think about in your head what that might think about, right? So one way you could think about this is kind of say, okay, I have, I have two away from the origin, always two away from a projection down. So I'm always two away from the z-axis. So when you think about it, it's kind of like this and kind of goes up and down. So it might be a cylinder. Let's think about why that might be true. R here can be written, as we can see from here, you can also write R as the square root of x squared plus y squared. Okay. Well, what would that mean? If I have the square root of R x squared plus y squared, that would be the square root of x squared plus y squared is equal to two. I square both sides. I get x squared plus y squared equal to four, which is the cylinder of radius two. There's a nice little way of writing that, right? This is just saying that I have a cylinder of radius two. This says that all of the points that have a polar radius of two. Kind of a nice simple way of writing it. And lastly here, I want to just kind of say, what if I told you that theta was equal to pi over four? I mean, what if I told you that? Well, it's not too obvious what this would mean. What would theta being pi over four mean? Well, let's think about what theta being pi over four is, right? That is specifically in the x equal to y direction, right here. It's kind of like this, right? I have a theta here, and I'm saying all the points that are in this direction. So you can imagine, I might want to have like a plane going in that direction. It's all the points that have a, an angle, a polar angle of pi over four. So now, how can I maybe think about this, right? Where can I come from that? Well, as a reminder, think about this geometrically. If I give you x and y and theta, if I could come in with Sokotoa here pretty nicely, I can find that that tangent of y over x is equal to theta. Oh, I'm sorry. That was a completely wrong thing to write. Tangent of theta is equal to y over x. <laughs> My bad. So good dog. Right. Opposite over adjacent. My bad. Tangent of theta is equal to y over x. Okay, so that would then mean that theta would be equal to tan inverse of y over x or arc tan. Okay, so if I replace this now, we can get here that this means that tan inverse of y over x is equal to pi over four. Taking the tangent of both sides, we would, get, we would get a y over x is equal to tangent of pi over four. Tangent of pi over four is when um, both x and y are the same, so we're at one there. And we get y over x is equal to one, or more formally, y is equal to x. It's just the plane y over x which we kind of saw right here. This, this is just that plane, y equal to x, going in that half plane. So cylindrical coordinates actually give us a nice little way of kind of understanding, and that's maybe even more succinct ways of writing equations for planes maybe, um, or, or cylinders here. Okay, let's get to the meat of the bones here. How do we compute some integrals? Right, let's switch into cylindrical coordinates. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is, is, is a relatively, I'm going to do three problems here um, in this video. The first one here is this integral over e of the square root of x squared plus y squared dv, where e is the region that lies inside the cylinder x squared plus y squared is equal to 16, and between z equal to negative 5 and z equal to 4. That's my goal here, okay? So I want to, where e is the region inside x squared plus y squared equals 16 and between z equal to negative 5 and z equal to 4. Okay, so let's go ahead and try to do this. Let's first off draw this out. The first thing I realize is this is a cylinder of radius 4. And if I draw this out here, I'm going to be stopping at a height of 5. And I'm going to be going down here 
to you know, a height of negative four, right? Down here is negative four, up here is five. And this is my entire cylinder. Okay. So now, why does this make sense for cylindrical coordinates, right? Why would we might want to switch, switch, uh, you know, switch it to that? A couple of reasons why we might want to do that. Firstly, firstly, the first thing you want to see is in my integrand, I actually have x squared plus y squared. It'd be really nice to exchange that for an r squared. And the square of doing that, it'd just be r. It makes integrating really, really nice if I can do that. Secondly here, my z is very, very easy to write down. I could see my z bounds almost immediately. And when I project it onto the xy plane, I get a circle. That's not too bad. You don't have to see cylindrical coordinates off the bat, by the way. You don't have to do that. If you see that z is very nice, and then you project down into the xy plane, and you see it can be re really nice and polar, you just go back and go, OK, I'm going to go and just change this now to cylindrical by exchanging everything. So here we would get, right, I have that z can be really quickly written as from negative 5 to 4. Those are my limits. Now, I project this surface out of the xy plane. And I hope you'd agree, if I, if I project this, if I just look at it from the top, it would just be the circle, right? It would just be that circle. It would just be this guy. And this would be a radius 4. And so we can write this very, very succinctly using polar coordinates. Right, because I know if I have a full circle, there's a full circle centered at the origin, I'm gonna have my radius from zero to the edge of that circle, which is gonna be four. And I'm gonna have my theta, I'm gonna have a full theta sweep. And so these are the regions. I just wanna show you something really cool. These are all constants. <laughs> so things come out really, really nicely now. So if you have all constants, we have all those different right, really nice properties. Okay. So now what we do to kind of, you know, continue this problem, we now take this and we will now integrate this as, we integrate almost always, and this is almost, well actually always, go with always here. We're gonna go with always. Always integrate in the cylindrical corners with respect to z first, okay? Now, if we do that, we'll go from negative five to four, zero to four, and zero to two pi. That's my limits. Now on this inside here, the inside of this, coming back here, this becomes just r. x squared plus y squared is r squared. The square root of that is just r. So the integrand becomes r. And then what we do is we again, remember, we have to multiply it by the differential of r dz dr d theta. We get that. More formally now, what's important to note here, I have a separable function. This is just in terms of r, this is r squared, I'm gonna change this to. Right, this is, I can even change this right now. And now what I could do is I could separate this and integrate every single one of these individually. So I could rewrite this as the integral from zero to two pi d theta, the integral from zero to four of r squared dr, and the integral from negative five to four dz. I'm able to do this because again, I have a separable function and I have a rectangle here, they're all constants. So I could do that. Anyway, and this is not too bad. We would get two pi here. In this case, we would get four to the third over three, which is the 64 thirds. And this guy is just negative four minus negative five, which is just nine. And so we would get 18 pi over three times 64, which I think just comes out to be six um, times 64. 382, 382. I think that's 382. That's my answer. So with this in mind, that's kind of what we're, we're thinking about here, right? We, what does this answer mean, by the way, again? Well, because this is actually always a positive number inside, we can kind of consider this as a density, right? Every single point gives me the density of the object, what kind of material it's made of in some way. And kind of integrating all over it will give me the mass of the object. So the mass of this object with this density here is equal to 382 pi. Now, this is about how we do it, right? We, we make sure we project onto these x, y plane after we integrate out with respect to z. Um, and then we, we make sure we have to change the integrand going forward. Okay, now the next thing we're going to do 
It's a little bit of a tougher problem, but hopefully it'll be more illuminating. Now, the problem we will do now is as follows. I want to find the volume of this. I want to find the volume of this. So the volume of of the solid that lies lies within lies within um, x squared plus y squared equals one and the sphere x squared plus y squared plus z squared is equal to four. Okay, I want to find the volume of this object that lies within the cylinder and the sphere. Okay, it lies within those, wherever I'm in between those. So let's start to think about what I'm doing here, right? What does this actually mean? That's kind of an interesting question. So inside of both, so let's first off start to try to graph this if we can. If I could draw a straight line, that would be freaking awesome. Draw axis. The first thing I'm going to draw here is my cylinder. My cylinder here, I'm going to zoom out a little bit. My cylinder here is x squared plus y squared equals 1. So it's just a radius of 1. This is a sphere of radius 2. Okay. So if I do this, I'll draw my cylinder. Kind of like that. And I'm going to go up and I'm going to go down. I'm going to go up here and I'm going to find that I get this kind of a cylinder here. As best as I can. I'm not the best artist, but we're trying to get as best of a, an image as possible. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is draw this sphere of radius 2. So I'm going to draw this sphere of radius 2 as best as I can. I know it's going to be bigger. And we're going to come down like this. Kind of like that. All right. So I want somebody that lies, and this is actually what starts to get really, really interesting and difficult, is that I'm lying within x squared plus y squared equals 1 and the sphere. It has to lie within both of them. So I'm first off discussing everything inside of the cylinder. But if you note here, what happens is like this top part kind of, kind of tackles it, right? What we see here is I kind of have this, I'm going to use a different color. I'm going to use a blue here. If we note, we kind of have this, like almost a cap that comes down and then also comes down here too. So we have like this spherical cap. It almost looks like, um, it, yeah, it almost, I mean, it, it looks, I mean, it's basically this thing, right? It's this object right here. That what we have here is this cap. So we have this cylinder, the cylinder kind of there, and then we have kind of this rounded object on top. It's almost like a missile. We have this rounded object on top and this rounded object on the bottom. That they're all inside of it. And it kind of comes to a head there. I hope you can kind of visualize that. If you're having trouble, let me know down in the comments or something like that. It's fine. But that's kind of the goal here. I have this, uh, I have the cylinder. It's everything inside the cylinder and inside of the sphere. So it kind of comes into play and we want to just, it gets capped by the sphere because the cylinder goes on forever. So it has to get capped by it at some point. Okay, so that's kind of the goal. Now, let's start to think about, not even think about cylindrical coordinates here. Let's not even think about cylindrical coordinates. Let's just think about what would be the easiest thing to integrate out first, right? Well, I don't think it'll be really easy to realize, oh my gosh, that was bad. Just threw my mouse away on Earth Day. That's mean to animals. So what I want to do here is I want to think about what I want to integrate out first. If I'm integrating out something first, right, it has to be pretty obvious, hopefully a little bit more obvious than not. 
if I had to get X out first or Y out first, I would always be hitting the cylinder or, and I might even be hitting the sphere on top, both ways. So I really want to make sense there. But I'm going to use green here for my arrows. If I integrate out Z first, kind of like this, like that here, if I integrate out Z first, well, if I do that, where am I always entering from? I hope you'd agree that I'm always entering from this bottom cap, which is the bottom part of this sphere. And I'm always exiting from the top part of the sphere. So it's actually not terribly bad to see that I'm always exiting and entering from the top and bottom part of the spheres. So with that in mind, that's going to be our easiest option. The other ones I would have to do three different integrals. So this is going to be our easiest option. So what would that really mean? Well, I know the sphere here has this form, x squared plus y squared plus z squared equals four. I need something z equals. So let's solve for z. I would get z squared is equal to four minus x squared minus y squared, something like that. And then I would take the square root. I would get z is equal to plus or minus the square root of four minus x squared minus y squared. The minus part is the bottom part of the hem uh, bottom hemisphere. The top part is the positive part, the positive um, part of that formula. So therefore, I know that z in this exact equation is capped by that. I know z is capped by below. Oh no, I didn't mean to do that, sorry. Z is then capped by, specifically, the negative hemisphere, and I'm coming in, and I'm leaving from the top part of this hemisphere. Okay, and that's kind of my goal there. I'm not thinking about cylindrical coordinates at all here either. I hope you're understanding that. I'm not thinking about cylindrical coordinates at all yet. I'm just thinking about, in total, what's the easiest thing to go for? What's the easiest you know, z to think about here? So now, what do I do after I've integrated out z? I now project onto the xy plane. If I project this onto the xy plane, looking at this from the top, would you agree I'll just get the circle that the cylinder is made out of? That's going to be the biggest thing. So I'll just get the circle. The circle is a radius one, I know that. And so because of that, I know that I can write this really nicely in polar coordinates. So therefore, maybe I should go back and change things to cylindrical. So with that in mind, I know I can write this equation for polar very quickly. This radius then is between zero and one, noting that right, we are cylinder here is x squared plus y squared equal to one, going from that. And theta here is again, we have a full circle, so we go from zero to two pi. Now, what I have to do is this can't be in terms of x and y anymore. This is where starts things start getting maybe a little bit more tad difficult. I can't have x and y here anymore. I need to exchange this for r and theta. It's necessary for me to do that. If I'm just going to be going cylindrical coordinates, I need everything, including the limits of integration, to be in terms of r and theta as well. So to do that, I can replace this x squared plus minus y squared with just r squared. Right? I can just replace that. I know that x squared plus y squared equals r squared, and so this becomes negative. Let me write this down. Let me just exchange this here. This now becomes negative r squared and negative r squared. And this right here are my limits of integration for cylindrical coordinates for this system. So I hope you saw that I didn't even think about cylindrical coordinates until later. I didn't. I, I, all I did was I honestly go through the process of z. I see that it's easiest to integrate out z first. And then from there, I then integrate with spec to, I, I, I then see I project it onto the xy plane. And I go, I can write this in polar. I might want to go back now and kind of go from there. So now with this in mind, as a reminder, how do we think about um, the volume of something? Right, so the volume of E, again, is just the triple integral over E dV. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to integrate with respect to Z, then R, then theta. So writing my limits, I first off will go negative square root of 4 minus R squared, square root of 4 minus R squared. I will then go from 0 to 1, and I will go from 0 to 2 pi. 
I will again do dz dr d theta, but I'm again here, even though we have a one in this integrand, I'm gonna to need to put my change of coordinates, which is gonna be this r. So I'm gonna have an r there. And because of this now also, I can't you know, separate things at the moment because I have specifically here, I don't have a rectangle anymore because these are dependent on r. So the first thing I'm gonna do is integrate out with respect to z. In this case, it's gonna be pretty simple because I'm just gonna get into z here and then you know, subtract those. So I'm gonna get r times z. Um, and now integrating this between negative four minus r squared and four minus r squared here, dr d theta. And then this just becomes really r times this minus that, which is just two times this guy. You just need to pause yourself here and, and kind of make sure that you understand that integration, that's okay. It's just a subtraction of those two things, right? It's just a subtraction of those. And so here, what I do is again, now I can separate because I now have all constants. I can integrate in each one individually. This theta one's gonna be two pi. I really don't have to worry about that too much because there's no theta dependence. But here, I might have to use a different technique in this case here, I'm gonna to have to do is a u substitution. So my u sub here is going to be, I'm gonna let u be equal to four minus r squared, and then du is gonna be equal to negative two r dr. So I'm gonna to have to pull this out, I'm gonna to have to put a negative here somewhere. So let's go ahead and do that. So two pi, you might think to yourself, well, that's a, that's a problem, isn't it? So I'm gonna have a negative integral of u, square root of u, du, something like that. And from here, what happens is I integrate this guy out now, because I have this 2r, right? I integrate this guy out now, and I will get 2 pi times negative, I'll get a 2 thirds times um, u to the 3 halves, something like that. And more formally, I would get two thirds, negative two thirds. I would then make this now a four minus r squared to the three halves, to the three halves, my apologies. And now why is that minus sign still hanging around, right? You still need this, and we still need this minus sign. And the reason why is because this comes four pi over three. I'm now gonna evaluate this r between zero and one. And this now becomes, this minus sign here, will become four minus one to the three halves minus four to the three halves. And this is why actually the minus sign's okay. You might think, oh, it's a volume. Shouldn't I not get that? And you're like, it's okay. Because this guy right here, this entire, this entire thing right here is gonna be negative because I'm gonna have three to the three halves minus four to the four halves from that point. Now, what is um, four to the three halves? Four to the three halves is actually four to the third and the square root of that, which is the square root of 64, which is eight. So this is three to the three halves minus, in this case, eight. Um, is this anything interesting? This is actually three root three. Um, and the reason why, right, we say that this is the three squared, three to the third square root of that. This becomes the square root of 27 or three root three, something like that. And so we can exchange things and say, this is four pi over three times eight minus three root three. And this is my answer, that's my volume. So kind of going back and, and making sure we're all good here. This, this integration might take a little bit of time. This integral, some might take a little bit of time to think about, especially trying to you know, make sure that your you know, values are correct and all that. Um, so going back to where we come up with our integrals, you know, integration, this is the most important part of coming up with these limits. You don't have to notice that you're doing cylindrical coordinates off the bat. That's a really important thing to remember. You can go ahead and go through the whole problem beforehand and then think about the limits of integration uh, in terms of cylindrical coordinates too. Coming back down to here, I would suggest doing that more often than not, because honestly, it might be, it might be better to even think about it in Cartesian 
I don't know. I, it really doesn't matter. It, it would be silly for you to go ahead and try to do things cylindrical coordinate wise, unless you didn't see something in the problem that kind of delineated it. Come to that thing out. Okay. Lastly, what I want to do is going to show you how to flip something from um, uh, Cartesian here into um, from Cartesian into polar and to cylindrical here. So I have this problem here, which is uh, 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 it is right here. So I have the integral from negative three to three, the integral from zero to the square root of nine minus x squared, and the integral from zero to nine minus x squared minus y squared, square root of x squared plus y squared, dz, dy, dx. And I want to evaluate this. Um, Honestly, I want nothing to do with this, integrating this with respect to z first, and then y and then x. Uh, I'm gonna get something really nasty. I'm gonna get like nine minus x squared minus y squared times this thing. That's gonna be like trig sub, pretty bad trig sub. That would be bad. So maybe there's a way we can integrate this that might help us out with cylindrical coordinates. Now, why might this be helpful, right? We first off see that this integrand would clean up very nicely in cylindrical coordinates by changing that x squared plus y squared be r squared. So what does this domain look like? The first thing you do, and this is really important when we're kind of going backwards, is not worry about anything in the integrand. That means nothing in terms of the domain of the problem in your limits of integration. It means nothing. So we're gonna go here. And we see that zero is less than or equal to z is less than or equal to nine minus x squared minus y squared. That's that first thing. And I said that y is bounded by this guy, nine minus x squared. And I said that x is bounded by negative three to three. Okay. So this first thing here, what we always want to do when we're trying to you know, think about what these look like triple integral wise, So in this case, if I go for my x, y domain, this is probably the easiest first. This first thing right here, I note that y is equal to zero is my line here. And then this guy right here, this is actually gonna be y squared, is equal to nine minus x squared, or x squared plus y squared is equal to nine. There's a circle of radius three. And I note here, I'm only gonna have the top part because y is between zero and that. As well, x is between negative three and three, so I'm gonna get this full kind of circle here. So this is, I already know what my projection is on the xy plane. That's, all, that's great about this. That's it. I know what my projection is on the xy plane. Done with that. As well, we might not now have to even try to, to, to draw it, but we're gonna draw it anyway. In this case, what does this look like? Well, z equal to zero is just the xy plane. Similarly, the z equal to nine minus x squared minus y squared, this guy is a paraboloid, right? Z equals nine minus x squared minus y squared. It's a paraboloid that starts at nine and goes downwards, right? Z is going downwards now. We start at nine and we go downwards. Kind of like this. And because I'm only on the top part, I actually know from this part, I'm only on the top part here above the x-axis, above the x-axis, right? And so this is my domain. Yeah. Now, because of this, I now want to convert this to polar coordinates, uh, cylindrical coordinates. Now, why is that? Well, first off, z is very easy because I've already given you z. I've already given you the bounds for z. So I can give you that off the bat if I want to change that. If I want to change this to cylindrical coordinates, right? All I do is this now becomes just an R squared. So kind of going over, just kind of seeing what we're going to do here. I'm going to transfer everything over now with a different color. This becomes zero less than Z. I replace this with R squared now, nine minus R squared. Let me do that. These guys now, I project the surface onto the xy plane as I've done here. This is very simple to write in polar coordinates. My radius of this circle is three, right? My radius of this circle is three. So I'm gonna be between zero and three. 
And my theta here is from zero on the positive x-axis all the way to negative, all the way to pi here. I'm going from zero to pi. And these are my limits of integration. Seemingly a lot easier than a square root and a trig sub and all that. That would be really, really bad. So with this in mind, what we go ahead and do now is our integral now becomes the following. Well, I still go with z first, as I always do. I then go with r, and then I go with theta. I get this here. And what I'm going to do now is I want to exchange this inside for my, my, my x equals r cosine, y equals r sine, z equals z. This will just become r because x squared plus y squared is r squared. The square root of that's just r. It's just a cone kind of aspect there. So this becomes r times what I have to exchange here is I'm going to do r dz dr d theta, right? I always need to add this dz dr d theta. And now I just integrate this guy which is a lot simpler, a heck of a lot simpler, because this just transforms then into an r squared. Anyway, with respect to z first, there's no z there. So I'm just going to subtract the top and lower ones. So this becomes, then I'm going to do this all in purple now, 0 to 2 pi, 0 to 3. This becomes then r squared times 9 minus r squared, dr d theta. Oh, I'm sorry. It's, it's, we're going from 0 to pi. I was wrong. Sorry about that. It's zero to pi. My bad. We have fixed that. Sorry. I'm going too fast, right? Theta here is between zero and pi. I make mistakes all the time. It's okay. We could fix it. So here we go. I got this r squared nine minus r squared. Again, here, this theta component's not really gonna matter that much. All I do is I integrate that individually. I can do that later, or I can do that now and just make it a pi. Right? And this integral right here, so we have zero to three of nine r squared minus r to the fourth. Anyway, this is not too bad. This becomes three r to the third minus one fifth r to the fifth between zero and three. Zero is not gonna matter. In this case, this would be, this would be three to the third times three, which is three to the fourth, which is 81. 81. And then here we would have 3 to the fifth, which is 243 divided by 5, whatever that number is. And I'm going to leave it there. Yeah, I'm going to leave it there at the moment. <laughs> whatever that number is in that case. 81 times 5 is 405. 405 minus 243, 162. 162. If, if my math is somewhat correct, it's 162 pi over 5. I have very, very bad math at the moment. 172. 162. Whatever. This is the answer. So what we do here again to kind of think about this, right, to transform something, we again, especially in cylindrical coordinates, you don't have to write everything out here. You only have to really think about the x and y, and then the z component just changes based on what the polar coordinates, what the cylindrical coordinates are. If you see an x, you go r cosine theta, y r sine theta. If you see an x squared plus y squared, you go for it, and do nine minus r squared. Make sure you draw this out and kind of go that way. You can't flip things, you can't just randomly put things up there. You have to be very, very conscious and very, very precise about what you put everywhere. So that's the idea of cylindrical coordinates. Um, I hope this kind of helps you visualize what we want to do here. I've been all over the place on this board. Um, I somehow always go in that direction. It's whatever. So the idea here again, as always, is, is, is to think about, right, we want to, if we want to see integrate with respect to cylindrical coordinates, we come back here. Um, we always want the r there. If I have a function inside, it's x equals r cosine theta, y equals r sine theta. If we're coming up with our bounds, the first bound we always want to come up with is z. If the z is very easy and we project onto the xy plane and we get some form of a polar thing, like a circle or something like that, we might want to use cylindrical coordinates. If you have something as an integrand, that's kind of like a square root of x squared plus y squared, or an x squared plus y squared, something in there, that might not be a bad thing to start to think about you know, switching over to that. 
Okay, that's kind of the goal here. Um, I hope you guys are all good and well. Um, happy Earth Day. Um, I'm gonna go to see my, I'm gonna go to my orchidonist in a little bit um, and try to get that from them. I still have a laugh track, so I'm okay with that. Um, stay safe and yeah, I'll talk to you soon. I'll talk, I'm gonna be doing next time, I'm gonna be doing 15.8 uh, on spherical coordinates and we'll keep going from there. Thanks guys, bye.